Hi there, Trey. This is Brad Goodwood with the Daily Market Insight for Tuesday, the 17th of August. Right, now having a look at the uh, dollar index, slowly dribbling to the downside. Nothing sort of significant, but, you know, we're really lacking the momentum. The month-on-month -month CPI last week really diffused the dollar up move. And now we're sort of waiting for the data to roll back in to see you know, what's going on with the dollar <clears throat> and what's going on with the other currency pairs in particular. Equity markets, pretty pretty neutral. Currency markets, pretty neutral. There's not a lot to get focused on just at the moment. <clears throat> but this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, the fundamental data comes into play. <clears throat> excuse me. So like today, we've got some significant uh, or high impacting UK data, the employment numbers, okay? Average weekly earnings, employment change, and the claim account, claimed count change. So these things are, you know, key, a key component to the UK economy. And don't forget the, uh, the whole UK strength thing has been on, on growth, you know, them coming out of the uh, pandemic with all this growth. But if the global growth isn't the same, well, then it just doesn't add up, right? So anyway, we've got UK data to keep a focus on for the European uh, session. And then you come back down here into uh, the US, keep an eye on the retail sales figures, right? They're, that's like a, a good second tier number that says a lot about employment and everything else that's going on. Don't forget, I'm expecting a CPI next month to be back in line with those high year on year numbers. And if we start to see retail sales high, you'll see, I think you'll start to see a bit of a move to the top side in the dollar as traders sort of put the uh, all the data together. Now, if it comes out weak, well, we're going to see a bit further downside on the dollar as well. It's still got a bit of a way to go. Now, just having a look, as you get started for the week, right, there's a few things you need to be sort of just paying attention to. Now, first of all, just if you've got Metastock or Bloomberg or a good news service, just see what the general focus is, you know. A China economy under pressure, risk factory output, retail sales grow slow, sharply. That's not a real big story. It was about a year and a half ago, two years ago, before the pandemic. It was all around China and global growth. Um, one thing here, this is what I was just talking about with Sterling. Like Sterling rallied about five or six cents during the pandemic when, when the vaccines were getting rolled out across the UK, you know, because they were going to unlock their economy. The growth was going to be amazing. But Sterling growth doesn't go unless global growth continues. So there's a, there's a bit of a thing here which sort of bucks the whole strong Sterling picture if global growth falters, and this is where they're sort of saying the numbers in US and China are sort of a weak, means global growth is not there. I think that's a that's a bit of a crap story because there's things happening in the States in particular. Well, then the UK uh, just dribbles to the downside. So have a look at the news, see what's going on, see if you can piece it together to what, if it fits the story of what is actually happening in the, the pairs you're looking at. Now, coming over here to start the week, now, I've intentionally left the uh, trend lines all over the place. Just so you can see where it was last week, you can see that the dollar moved to the top side and stall just as it broke above resistance and then just dribbled back down. Now, same for um, pretty much the same for uh, dollar Swiss. Uh, dollar yen sort of broke down through the downside and dollar CAD buck in the trend, oil at back at 67 bucks. It supports the top side moving dollar CAD. And you've got this slow little bleeding move in uh, Euro. And don't forget, Euro was behaving a little bit differently to Sterling, Aussie and Kiwi in the last week. You see the Kiwi sort of contracting ranges. Uh, Aussie's a little bit higher, but the same sort of thing. And Sterling dribbling to the downside, but still in a range bound uh, basis. Now, this is obviously where you come back and you get some uh, benefit of or going through your analysis once again. It's just tuning up your trend lines to, to what's actually going on. So if I just uh, come through, I'll just do a few of these because it's this is the, the best time to be doing it when nothing's actually happening. I'm just going to fix up the base there. Um, you can get your trend lines done without any pressure about worrying about what's going on. Now, I don't know the color of that, so let me just double click on that. I use a red trend line for my trend line. So this, this trend line here is now not in play. So I'll delete that. We've got a new high up here. That green trend line tells me it's a bit more of a longer term trend line. So I've got that in place. <clears throat> I mean, if you were keen, you could start drawing the, the, the new start of a trend line here. It's not a bad idea. So there's the dollar index 
as it is in my opinion, that's, that's where the lines are. Now, just having a look at some of these other things like dollar Swiss, right? We've got this trend line. So previously this line was acting as resistance. When it breaks higher here, it starts to act as support. Okay. And, or once again, as resistance, this, this is where you get those sort of pivot lines and they're not like horizontal pivots. If this is a trend line that is in play. Uh, you can see very clearly coming off these multiple highs here. Uh, we've had the clean snap. And if you leave it there, it can actually become beneficial down the track. Now, I would also like, like be drawing a new trend line to the top here. <clears throat> no, it hasn't lined up with the right point. Let me just fix that up. Right, so I sort of know where that is. You know, I need to get uh, tune up the downside here. A lot of people think the uh, technical analysis, doing technical analysis is a bit of a pain, but it's actually, I find it quite relaxing, to be honest. Um, okay, so we've got some lines here, previous resistance. I'm just going to change the color of that so I know it's, so I know what it is. I've got my own sort of color coding system. Those traders who are familiar with our program will, be, will understand what I'm doing there. Same thing here. Basically, the actual, ex exact same thing on the downside, if I just shrink up the data here, it's not so much data that it's, I'll have to change the time frame. But what we're talking about is th this trend line was acting as support. Now, when it comes back up, acts as resistance. You can see exactly how that sort of comes into play there as well. So once again, I could actually just uh, let myself know. I'm not, I'm not going to delete that trend line because I, I sort of want to know exactly where it is. I'm going to have to go into a daily chart here to get that more data. So what I'm trying to do there is, is find that the actual low here. So I've got this low, uh, sort of just to the to the over here. So there's a couple of different things I need to do. Now, let me just get rid of those horizontal lines. Actually, I could take this one here. It's a bit of common sense in your analysis. Now, drawing a trend line, this is a bit, a bit more of a lesson, if anything. Drawing a trend line from the low to the most current low is just really focusing on what was the low, right? We, we're losing all those common touches where the trend line is. Now it is the only trend line, but if I take that back to an hourly, I'll, you'll have a better idea of, of, of what we're looking at. So 117.02 is, uh, that's, well, I guess you could just call that a double bottom. It's one of those things. I just want to sort of put everything in place, blow out the data, let's have a look. Well, that sort of gives me a, a better idea of what's happening in Euro. It's, it's holding up against that resistance line. We've got pure resistance at the top. We've got a support level at the downside. And well, you know what? Just like the dollar index, you could actually be drawing a, uh, another trend line in here. This is the start of the new trend line. Change it to red so I just know it's a basic trend line. And there we are. Now you just go through all your charts and update them where you can. Right. This is we're coming into Tuesday in Asia. So Monday night in North America, it's uh, this is a great time to be redoing your your analysis and even looking at, uh, say, the Aussie here. We've got a bit of a clearer picture. This thing is just trading sideways. Uh, we've got support and resistance. It's in play. What I would be doing is is coming back to the uh, economic data and trying to find out if we've got any um, key releases coming out that may be um, important for the Aussie. Now, obviously it's Aussie data or the US data. We've got US retail sales today. That's gonna to be important for us as well. So make sure you, you do spend the time to go through your analysis, right? You can actually sort of see what's going on. I've just tuned up the Kiwi there while I was just yapping away. And if I just change that, that's now back to a resistance line. This is gonna make it easy for you to isolate the um, support and resistance level. So you can actually really isolate the trading opportunities. Now. There's not much more you can do. Why I'm explaining this is because I've got time to do it because there's nothing really happening in the market. As I said, US retail sales uh, in North America, Tuesday, we've got the uh, UK employment data today, some GDP flash estimates there out of the, out of the Eurozone. I'd definitely be keeping an eye on those, especially with Euro sort of in limbo. So right now, if, just flip back to the charts for a sec. If we were looking right now, you can see these currencies with that weaker CPI number, everything's just drifted back right into the middle of the range. Okay, or well, actually dollar CAD's broken higher, but the rest of the pairs are sort of just jamming away, 
right? Or with actually dollar yen is, is another one where it's sort of come back down a, a lot further. So isolate the pairs where you got maybe support and resistance or a good support or a good resistance level, one that you can understand the fundamentals and also hopefully one that uh, matches up with the economic data. So one thing, for example, sterling, all this sterling data, you're looking at sterling against the US, obviously, and sterling crosses. Make sure you go through, do your charts, do your analysis on all the sterling crosses. It'll uh, pop, bring up some uh, trading ideas around what you can find. So it's worthwhile doing there. And outside of that, we're just sitting tight, waiting for the next opportunity. It's a good idea to scroll down through the week, right? Have a look at um, where the major focus is going to be. Obviously, it's a big week for sterling, CPI, RPI. That's uh, the retail price index and the consumer price index. Now, the Bank of England hasn't really come out and told us that they're, they're watching things closely yet. So the data isn't as active as the UK stuff, but we're getting closer to that. So I think there's a chance that we could start to see some impact there from uh, the UK CPI data. And then just keep on the residual numbers. Now, you come into um, Wednesday's trading, we've got uh, Canadian CPI data, very important. Um, Bank of Canada already telling us that they will move once things start to happen. We've got the, uh, this is one for those uh, Aussie traders, we've got the Aussie employment figures Thursday. Uh, that's, a, that's a robust number. Once again, the RBA not really giving us too much. Then you come down into uh, Thursday's weekly jobless claims out of the US, right? One of those numbers that sort of can sort of poke and prod the market. And you come back down, finish off the uh, big week in the UK. We've got UK retail sales and also Canadian retail sales. So to me, dollar CAD, sterling, Aussie, Euro, they're the pairs to be focusing on this week. All right, guys, have a good one. And uh, yeah, hang in there. Good trading conditions will come when the data hits hits the uh, hits the ground with a bit of variance. That'll give the market and traders and all the institutions some idea of direction and momentum. And that's when these things move. All right, guys, have a good one.